Breast cancer is the second most common cancer among American women. And the chance of developing invasive breast cancer at some time in a woman's life is about one in eight. According to the American Cancer Society, there will be about 183,000 new cases alone this year. Our guest today is Dr. John West. He's the co-founder of the Breast Care Center of Orange County. The center offers patients the latest technology in breast health, diagnosis, and treatment. Thanks for coming, John. You know, we've known each other for two and a half decades almost, and you've always been on the cutting edge of this. How, how did you get involved with the breast cancer specifically? Well, I was always interested in the problem of breast cancer because it's such a devastating problem, and uh, I had been taking care of women for years, and when the mammography came out, we saw the excitement of catching these cancers early, but what I found that uh, there was a lot of delays and frustration, and the patient that really got me uh, off the, uh, got me going on this was a patient who came to me in about February, and she had in December found a breast lump, and she, it took her weeks to get in to get a mammogram, and then weeks to get the additional views, and then her doctor took another week to see him, and then he finally sent her to a surgeon. The surgeon couldn't fit her in, and she finally called me and said, "Please, you know, will you see me?" Well, I saw her that day. We did a needle aspiration, made the diagnosis, gave her a plan of treatment, and she said, "You know, you've got to do this for other people. This is the way breast cancer should be cared for." And that was what motivated me to develop a comprehensive breast cancer program that includes uh, imaging with mammography, ultrasound, MRI, the surgeons, the surgical care, the plastic surgeons, the oncologist, the radiation therapist, a totally integrated program where people talk to each other, can develop a plan for the patient to make sure that her needs are met, that her questions are answered, and she feels part of a team that really knows how to take care of her. So I think that unknown, what's, what is it, is just excruciating for the, most The amount people. of suffering that these yeah. women go through when somebody calls them and said, oh, uh, yeah. that gets a letter in the uh, paper, in the mail, and says, You're, you have an abnormal mammogram. Well, her first thought is, I'm going to die. And yeah. so she has to call right away and, and get in, but they can't get her in for a few weeks. And then she's got to wait for that report. And it just doesn't, uh, our system now, the woman comes in to see us. They get the mammogram, the additional views, the ultrasound, the reading, see the surgeon that day, and everything's done within an hour visit where it's taken care of. And then they're either set up for additional uh, biopsies if needed, or if everything's normal, they're told they're normal, do your breast self-exam once a month, and we'll see you in a year, and it works so well. And you've been doing this for years like this. I mean, right. you've really been cutting edge. You know, I'm, I'm impressed that in my practice, even though it's a cardiology practice, I see so many women with breast cancer, maybe three or four some days. And I see, and I get the sense that there's this epidemic out there. There is an epidemic going on. I mean, I think everybody in this country has had a family member or a friend that's been somehow sure. uh, had an experience with breast cancer. And the good thing is these cancer patients now live so long that they have a lot of time to share their stories and kind of motivate yeah. us. Uh, one of the ironies of breast cancer is that it's a disease that's more common among wealthy people. So if you get... Yeah. Uh, nations where uh, people work out in the farms and the third world nations that uh, the, the ladies are very thin growing up. They start their period uh, in 1718. They get pregnant early on and have a couple of kids and then go into menopause. That's a major protective uh, factor uh, against breast cancer. Whereas in our community, people are very well nourished. Uh, they tend to be a little heavier. They start mm -hmm. their periods real, er, real early. Then they delay the onset of the first pregnancy, sometimes going to grad school or whatever. Mm -hmm. And all these expose the women to, to longer cycles of estrogen, which stimulate the breast and make the breast at more risk. So it's, it's surprising when you look at the United States, yeah. the more affluent areas tend to have a higher risk of breast cancer. So the sense is there's, there are not hotbeds in the country where mm -hmm. like maybe with, with other kinds of cancers that have more breast cancer. For any other than the affluency. I think the affluency is the only thing they've uh, noted. There are some racial disparity. They've, they've recognized that uh, the uninsured, for instance, tend to get a later diagnosis, and so they have a poorer prognosis. And this is just one of those basic rules about breast cancer. If you follow all the rules right, if the woman starts getting her mammogram at age 40 or younger, if she has a family history, and she does it regularly, yeah. and she does the breast self-exam with confidence, which mm -hmm. most women, of course, don't do, don't do, but when they're taught to do it, they can do it very well, that they have a doctor that they can go to who will 
evaluate any new symptoms and get the ultrasound or the MRI or the additional workup, whatever is necessary, if we put all these uh, tools into action, we can diagnose breast cancer earlier and save lives. And I see that in my practice all the time. I see women who are doing regular breast self-exam find a little change, a little subtle change. They bring it to me. We examine them. Sometimes we can't even feel it. We put the ultrasound on it. There's a cancer the size of a, a half the size of a pea. Well, mm -hmm. with that woman, you just take it out. Uh, you do radiate. There's probably no chemotherapy. She's probably cured. If that same lady had yeah. waited, yeah. that could have grown and, and maybe be missed on the first mammogram mm -hmm. and, and seen another year. And next thing you know, she's got a stage two or three breast cancer, chemo, mastectomy, radiation. So the real key, and I think for the, for the public, is to understand the importance of not only knowing about breast cancer and being aware of it, but taking on a personal plan of action. Mm -hmm. So you know that when do you start your mammogram? If you're high risk, you've talked to a doctor. What does high risk mean? What kind of tests uh, should I do? You do the self-exam if something changes, you bring it to the doctor's attention. You make sure the doctor gives you a specific answer. And if tissue sampling is necessary, then, then you do it. But whatever it takes, you must catch it early because that's how we really save the lives. So it seems to me that, I mean, you People shouldn't say, well, we have all this high-tech stuff. We have mammograms, ultrasounds, MRI, but still, you're still advocating breast exam is really crucial for detecting I think it it's early. the entire package that we see. Every patient I come in with a delayed diagnose, diagnosis, I, I try to evaluate what could we have done better. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's the woman doesn't come in for her mammogram or she found a lump but she ignores it. Sometimes she finds a lump, goes to the doctor. He says it's nothing. Or he gets a mammogram and it's negative. They don't get the ultrasound. There's so many pitfalls that can lead to delay yeah. that it takes, I think, the motivated and educated patients who's inspired mm -hmm. to want to diagnose this early and wants to, to follow all the steps. It's kind of natural, I would think. Yeah. Heidi, tell me, no woman <laughs> wants to find a lump. Absolutely not. And half the time when you're searching around, you think, is it one or is it one? Exactly. And I can imagine if a woman does find a lump, it must be pretty difficult to own and say, gee, I need to go to the doctor and deal with this. It's very scary. It's very scary. And you make a great point about the normal lumpy breast. First of all, we tell our yeah. women who are having periods, the best time to do it is a few days after you finish your period when the estrogen levels are at their lowest. And the ideal time is then to go to a doctor and have the doctor do a complete exam or examines the entire breast and says, okay, this is normal. Now, I then take my patient's hand and I, I take them through the exam and say, okay, close your eyes, put enough pressure on so you feel the bumpiness and try to visualize that pattern. Right. And once you do that, uh, we tell them to go home that night and spend 20 or 30 minutes doing it that night and the next night and the next night and the next night. Over time, they get a clear mental image of the normal. Then they do it once a month at the same interval in their cycle. If something changes, they pick it up and they bring it to the doctor. But I've had women come to me with little bitty cancers <laughs> that they're found they're so small I can't feel them myself. I really? see them on ultrasound. So right. you've established a baseline with them on, a exactly. on their own procedure and that right. enables them to... Um, detect something that's abnormal. Speaking of procedures, we were lucky enough to go to Dr. West Center and see this new technology and his 45-minute round-trip diagnosis in action. Let's take a look. This is one of our new GE ultrasounds, very high quality and extraordinarily helpful for us in taking care of patients particularly good in the patient under 30 where we want to avoid any form of radiation exposure. This allows us to use sound waves to characterize changes in the breast and it's extremely uh, accurate and certainly in most cases will differentiate with a high accuracy between benign and malignant. We use it on almost all age groups though. We know for example that some cancers will be missed completely on the mammogram and show up like a light bulb uh, on the ultrasound exam. Normally if we have a lump or a spot on the mammogram we can characterize it before taking them to the operating room and if it's a cancer then we can plan the appropriate operation but the ultrasound works really easily it's absolutely painless I'll show it on my arm here and light up my radial artery which will show up in red the red is a pulsating blood vessel on the breast it's pretty much the same thing it's a warm gel the patients find it a very easy procedure and it's very quick so our patients come in get the mammogram uh, the additional views, they get the ultrasound on the same visit, they see me that day, I can go over if it's normal, everything's fine, if there's a problem, then we can uh, get the plan of action uh, started that day and within a few days get an absolute answer as to whether a, ha a spot happens to be benign or malignant.
Well, this is the newest state-of-the-art digital mammogram. The digital is so much better than the older film screen and that the film comes up just like a digital camera. You can see it immediately and come up with a, a reading. The woman doesn't have to wait so long in compression. But probably the greatest thing is that we have much better visualization, particularly in women, younger women with dense breasts. And this is, allows us to catch cancers earlier and save more lives. The breast goes into the plate. The woman stands here. It goes into compression. So the breast is across here and the, the picture is taken from down below. But the uh, women is made pretty comfortable. The breast has to be pulled out onto the plate to get as close to the uh, chest wall as possible. The nice thing about the digital is it's so fast. So the woman comes in, she get a couple of pictures and she's out of compression. Rather than staying in compression and waiting uh, for that image to develop while she's uncomfortable. So this is a much faster, uh, much more well tolerated uh, procedure and much more accurate. So we've got the four views. This is the lateral view left and right. And this is what we call a CC or the cranial caudal view looking straight down on the breast. It allows the technician to tell immediately if they've had adequate compression and adequate positioning. If there's a need for a change, they can within a few seconds readjust the machine or the breast and get that quality image. These then go to the imager who reads the films while the patient's still in the room. The tech looks at the images, analyzes the images, makes sure that they're okay, that they're the kind of quality that the, uh, that the radiologist will need. These images are then transmitted directly to the uh, radiologist. From there, they can go out uh, to see me in the uh, next door in the surgery side so that we then see the patient with a complete mammographic workup, the ultrasound workup, a specific reading, and then we can go from there for a plan of action. That, John, that was very interesting, and you can be congratulated on setting up such a fantastic center. But I have one, a, a couple of things I want to ask you. Um, one is, you mentioned estrogen exposure. How are birth control pills mm -hmm. a problem for, or are they a cause of breast cancer, do you think? No, it turns out that the actual birth control pill lowers the estrogen in the system, mm -hmm. huh. and the women, uh, the studies, by and large, total all, totaling all the studies together show no risk factor whatsoever. So actually they're protective. The issue we really get into is the postmenopausal use of estrogen. And we know that a lot of women after menopause are gonna have hot flashes mm -hmm. and night sweats, and some of them could be absolutely miserable. We know that for a few years it's pretty safe. We try to use as low a dose as possible, mm -hmm. and then we try to taper the woman off if at all possible. I find that 20 or 30% of the women, even in the 60s or 70s, still have such severe hot flashes yeah. that it, or night sweats that it becomes a balance between quality of life and estrogen. If they're going to stay on the estrogen, then we just follow them a little bit more closely. Fortunately, now we have the digital mammography that allows us to see into the dense breasts, even in the older women, much better than the old film screen uh, technology. Huh? So now we're not having as much problems with the dense breasts mm -hmm. that we had before. So if we... Again, take each woman and individualize her issues, her risks, her needs. We can set up a plan of action that meets her needs, and we have to be reasonable about it. I mean, sometimes menopausal <laughs> symptoms can be so bad, we do have to use the estrogen. We live with that, but we follow them a little bit more closely. Thanks so much for coming. It's great. I mean, you've done a great service to the community, and you've been cutting edge and a, a great friend. We appreciate you coming on. It's very interesting. Thank you, Larry. Thank, Thank you. you, Heidi. I appreciate it. Thank you it. very much.